Tulsa Pro is a newer prostate cancer treatment that we've seen in clinical trials, but now we're seeing it start to come to market here in the US and we're seeing centers pop up. But there is a lot of marketing behind it and we wanna know how does it compare against traditional prostate cancer treatments? What are the side effects and the pros and cons if you do choose Tulsa Pro for either whole gland treatment or focal treatment? Dr. Mark Schulz, who's a 30 year medical oncologist solely in prostate cancer, he's gonna answer our questions today and I hope you find this helpful. So today, Dr. Scholz, we're talking about Tulsa Pro. Now, this has been a heavily marketed procedure. It seems like a lot of times when I'm Googling things in prostate cancer, there's a Tulsa Pro ad at the top of that Google page, and a lot of patients have questions about it because a couple years ago, we did have Dr. Klotz come on and talk about you know, the um, invention of this new procedure, but two years later, we want to do an update and find out really where does it play So, in the world of prostate cancer, but also, kind of what is the appropriate stage? So I thought we would start with that. What is the stage where someone who is thinking about Tulsa Pro, like where would this apply? Tulsa Pro uh, uses a, a technology called high intensity focused ultrasound or HIFU. We've had HIFU around for 10, 15, 20 years now. And uh, traditionally, the doctors doing HIFU would shoot this high intensity uh, beam through the rectal wall into the prostate and it would destroy uh, prostate tissue, prostate cancer. It was sort of a freehand proposition. The ultrasound would be looking in, and then they'd go and push a button, and it would zap areas in the prostate. And an effective but uh, highly operator-dependent type of methodology, uh, very dependent on the skill of the doctor doing the HIFU. So Tulsa Pro has developed a more precise way to direct the power beam. First off, it starts at the urethra and fires outward rather than through the rectum inward. More importantly, it's done while you're inside of an uh, MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, so they can get a clear picture of the prostate while the treatment is ongoing. To try and compensate for the fact that the prostate buried down in the pelvis uh, is kind of difficult to image. Uh, we only really started getting good MRIs about 10 years ago. We've used ultrasounds, but the ultrasounds, uh, sometimes the uh, image quality hasn't been sufficient to see exactly where the cancer was. MRIs are better at that. The role for this uh, Tulsa Pro technology is for men who have a localized prostate cancer for treating the prostate. It's not for treating metastatic disease. It's uh, an effective uh, type of treatment. It definitely uh, is worthy of consideration in men that have newly diagnosed localized prostate cancer. Before I get to my next question, please click that subscribe button. When you do this, it tells YouTube that these videos were helpful for you, and it takes our videos and promotes them to other patients who are searching for prostate cancer answers. Also, if you would like to join our cause, you could do so at pcri.org forward slash donate. Now back to my conversation with Dr. Schulz. You know, there's a lot of different things about Tulsa Pro that I have so many questions on. Number one, if it is for localized disease, is there a certain Gleason grade, you know, maybe above six, where it would be more appropriate? More and more, the decision about the treatment for what's in the prostate is not going to be based as much on Gleason score as it was in the past. Gleason score in the past was to help us decide if there was any metastatic disease, but now we have PSMA PET scans that can tell with more confidence uh, whether there's metastatic disease. The tailoring of treatment inside the prostate, whether it would be with Tulsa Pro or radiation or, or other methodologies, I think is going to be less important. So I think that Tulsa Pro is a very reasonable treatment for any type of Gleason score. You mentioned not Gleason 6 because that's a variant that doesn't metastasize, and we usually recommend active surveillance for those fellows. But for all the other Gleason scores, I think it's a certainly a reasonable consideration. How long does the procedure typically take? Whenever people are thinking about treating prostate cancer, they're going to be trying to comparison shop with what the other alternatives are. Uh, the convenience of the procedure, the effectiveness, how good are the cure rates, and of course, what are the side effects, and then perhaps the cost. All these things uh, need to be factored into a decision. The Tulsa Pro procedure is uh, done, as I mentioned already, inside the MRI. And because the device that's in your penis and, and firing powerful beams into your prostate can hurt, 
Uh, men are under general anesthesia when they do this. And the procedure, I think, is going to take anywhere from an hour and a half to two and a half hours. So are there any side effects from this procedure? Well, any time people undergo treatment to the prostate, there are potential side effects. And the reason is, is that the prostate is a small target, and it's very close to other sensitive structures, like nerves for erection, bladder, rectum, these sorts of things. Men that have Tulsa Pro treatment were, are going to have a sore prostate afterwards, and they'll have a catheter in for a week or so after the procedure. General anesthesia in men that are 60 and 70 years old can have some complications occasionally. I would say that in a well-performed Tulsa Pro procedure, that uh, particularly if it's a focal treatment, that men are going to recover very quickly. And other side effects that I mentioned, like rectal, urinary, or sexual damage, uh, should occur pretty infrequently. With the procedure being done through the urethra, is there any you know, concern for scar tissue, any sort of permanent issues that men could face in that, using that type of procedure? No, I'd be more concerned about the traditional things that, we, you know, that we're concerned about with treatment, treating prostate cancer, such as uh, impotence, um, and then to a lesser degree, much, much lesser degree, uh, other side effects would be related either to the anesthesia or just to um, the fact that, yes, you had something put in your urethra and that irritation and less than 1% of men could result in some strictures. But I think the, the real issue comes down in deciding to use Tulsa Pro is cost. Sometimes insurance is, is not covering it. Uh, the, uh, the need for general anesthesia. And the fact, of course, that this is a newer technology and some of the centers are still in their learning curve. And, and we don't know, uh, does their skill set, uh, has it risen to the level of, of where it needs to be? Uh, in, the, in the learning process that is always associated with new treatments. So men who have localized disease, you know, there are higher and higher cure rates in those situations, and men are aware of this, and that causes more focus on sexual health and their romantic life. So in comparison to any of the other treatments that we see on the market, is Tulsa Pro more likely or less likely to have sexual side effects? I think that there's a hope that in expert hands, and especially where the doctors can do a focal treatment rather than the whole prostate treatment, that the risk of erectile dysfunction is going to be dramatically reduced. Since the technology fires from the inside out and the nerve bundles which we're trying to uh, save are on the outer portion of the gland, in some theoretical constructs the idea is that the risk of erectile dysfunction will be reduced even in men that are having their whole prostate treated because they're hopefully steering away from those neurovascular bundles, which you can see pretty clearly on the MRI. Not every situation is gonna allow them to do that because sometimes cancer invades into the neurovascular bundles and they'll have to be treated. In particular, the men that are uh, thinking about a focal treatment, that is where they're treating the cancer with a margin around it, but leaving much of the prostate intact and untreated, the likelihood of preserving sexual function is gonna be excellent. This technology is uh, one of the leading technologies to consider if men want to pursue focal therapy. So one of the questions when it comes to focal therapy we get quite often is does it matter on what side of the prostate it is? Does it matter how much, you know, tumors? Is there too many tumors within a certain size where we can't do focal? What are the parameters? There's no formula and this is one of the problems when we raise the topic of focal therapy is that it is a situation where we're still in the learning curve. There aren't any rules of the road yet what you need is an experienced doctor who has great imaging skills, understands how prostate cancer behaves, and once a person finally embarks upon focal therapy, and presumably it'll be successful and they eradicate the spot, there needs to be a, a strategy for continued monitoring of the untreated prostate afterwards. Because prostate cancer is so common, men can get a second primary tumor in another part of the gland later, and you want to detect that early and treat that as well. In reality, to treat the whole prostate and for a man to emerge unscathed from that treatment, it's much more difficult than treating a portion of the prostate, assuming you can see the tumor clearly and you have a skilled physician who knows how to uh, aim the, the device appropriately and then select an appropriate margin for error because we know the imaging is not perfect. To ensure good control, we don't want to see partially treated tumors because scar tissue forms after they do the Tulsa Pro and coming back and trying to do a touch-up job, which some of the focal doctors talk about like, well, if I miss it the first time, I can get it the second time. True, 
but the incidence of complications goes way up if you're treating a previously treated person who has a lot of scar tissue. We really want to get the job done right the first time. We don't want it to come back. And there's a constellation of experience and skill uh, that is necessary to make focal tr treatment work properly. How does Tulsa Pro affect PSA after treatment? So PSA levels after treatment are going to depend on whether it's a focal or a whole prostate uh, therapy that that individual underwent. So with um, whole prostate Tulsa Pro, the PSA should drop very low, down to 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 or 0 0.1. But in men that have focal therapy, much of the prostate will be preserved and their PSA may only drop down to one or two. That's why monitoring afterwards, not just with PSA, but with regular MRI scans, perhaps one, once a year, uh, is an appropriate methodology for people that have had previous focal therapy. So with yearly MRI scans, how often should their PSA be checked? Well, people are going to be curious and check the PSA for the first year or two after focal therapy or whole prostate therapy on a quarterly basis. And then uh, typically we would check PSAs uh, every six months for several years thereafter. On those MRIs, when somebody does have Tulsa Pro, are they going to see that that tumor is just gone and off the MRI completely? Absolutely. And uh, we do post-treatment ultrasounds as well. After the tumor is destroyed and the immune system comes in and sweeps up the debris, uh, if you do an ultrasound of someone's prostate that had a focal therapy, it looks like someone took a bite out of the apple. There's just not only is the tumor gone, but the prostate is gone. So one of the questions that we received from our previous video is that if somebody has metastatic disease, but they want to treat the prostate and deal with the disease locally, would Tulsa Pro ever be an option? Yeah, it certainly is. I think when we're talking about treating metastatic disease, it's usually with radiation. And uh, it, the policy of eliminating the tumor in the prostate in men that are getting spot radiation for oligometastatic disease, the policy of Giving some radiation to the prostate is, is becoming more widely accepted now, but uh, Tulsa Pro would be an equally plausible treatment, and uh, that is, um, uh, you know, it'd be a matter of convenience, cost, and patient preference. One of the things about you is that you're a medical oncologist who is, you know, advising people in prostate cancer for the last 30 years. You know, you have patients from all around the world, and you don't do Tulsa Pro, you don't do radiation, you don't do surgery. So I really like to point that out because as a medical oncologist, you're really giving people um, information without having skin in the game for that particular procedure. When it comes to Tulsa Pro, there is so much marketing behind it and it is exciting that we do have these new treatments, but would you choose that as the primary tool for a patient who has localized disease and is either looking for focal or whole, you know, whole, um, whole prostate treatment, or is there a different treatment that you think is more effective than Tulsa Pro? Well, right now I would say that the Tulsa Pro would probably be in the number two position. You know, there's three, four, five, six, and seven for focal treatment. We have laser treatments, we have old-fashioned high food treatments, we have uh, cryotherapy, electroporation. Uh, these are more dependent, in my opinion, on the skill of the operator than the type of technology that you decide to use to destroy the tissue. I've been defaulting more towards uh, brachytherapy, which is a form of implanted radiation as uh, the focal methodology of choice. And why would I be leaning toward that over Tulsa Pro experience? I um, have uh, been observing it for a longer period of time. I'm more familiar with the, with the landscape and the technology than I am with Tulsa Pro. Insurance usually covers radiation, whereas Tulsa Pro, it's sort of spotty in terms of the insurance coverage. The anesthesia is more extensive with Tulsa Pro, which I, I don't like giving anesthesia to people in their 60s and 70s because it can be uh, associated with lingering memory problems. All those, quote, negatives being said in relation to brachytherapy, I think it, it, as we gain more experience with it, as the doctors uh, get uh, their skill level up, uh, it's attractive because one of the most important aspects about focal therapy is that you see the target and you eliminate the target. And to be able to have the luxury of doing the treatment while the person is in an MRI and they can actually real time observe the destruction of the tumor while they're looking at the MRI is a big advantage for Tulsa Pro. It's a fair consideration. Uh, I don't have as much firsthand direct experience with outcomes, maybe five or 10 patients I've had that have gone through it and they seem happy, I'm not getting any early pushback in terms of patients who've undergone unusual side effects, difficulties, or long-term problems. So I think it's, a, it's gonna be a keeper.
A couple of things that came to mind as I was interviewing Dr. Scholes were that, you know, Tulsa Pro is a newer treatment. And one of the things that I think is important to do if you are seeking Tulsa Pro is to call the centers and ask how many procedures have they done and what is the process like. The more information and research you do, the better. I would also use maybe support groups or online forums to see if you can talk to a Tulsa Pro patient and find out their outcomes and what their, you know, system was like. What center did they go to? And are they experiencing any side effects. Just knowing those things ahead of time helps the process. I would also interview multiple physicians, um, you know, with different treatments. I would go ahead and talk to a brachytherapist. I would talk to a medical oncologist. I would talk to radiation doctors. And I would find out that if Tulsa Pro is something that I'm seeking, I want to know all of my options and do as much research as possible. One of the concerns that I have as a prostate cancer advocate is that some of these treatments are very heavily marketed. And just because they're marketed heavily doesn't mean it's necessarily the best for your particular prostate cancer case. Tulsa Pro may be a really great option for you, whether that be in focal therapy or in whole gland therapy. But I think it's really good that the more information you know about your particular prostate case, the more you can apply strategic treatments and also know ahead of time what the game plan is for any sort of side effects. You wanna mitigate those as much as possible and know ahead of time. So asking the centers, how many procedures have you done? Interviewing the doctors, finding out your other options and finding patients who have been through that procedure are great ways to build up your knowledge and research when it comes to specific treatments, especially newer treatments that have come in to the market of prostate cancer. So if you would like help with your particular case, you can contact our helpline at pcri.org forward slash helpline. And what they do is they're prostate cancer patients who have been through different types of treatments, but they've been trained by our medical oncology team. And they're able to give you information, not advice, but this helps you ask, you know, your doctor's specific questions. Maybe helpline can help you formulate those questions and it comes to a better outcome. The more questions and the more strategic you get in those doctor's appointments, the better the outcomes and the more secure you feel in the knowledge of what you're choosing and how you've moved forward in your prostate cancer journey. Thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you would like to join our cause. You can also donate at pcri.org forward slash donate. But please remember, most of all, you're not alone.